Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is tutorial number 31 and I'm going to discuss the Fermi Dirac distribution which is uh, we're going to maximize the occupancy function or make the most probable distribution. I'd also like to note that I have a website now, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the previous videos to this are number 30 where I worked out the Bose-Einstein distribution function number 29 where I showed what the values for alpha and beta are at 28 where I did the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution now this is the most detailed of the lot so I suggest go back to here if, if you don't understand what I'm doing in this video and I've done others on Lagrange multipliers and optimizing uh, or maximizing the multiplicity because this is the last time we've done this or this is the, the last function to be maximized I'm going to do it pretty quickly because at this stage you've seen it a few times so we're talking about fermions, so in a previous video I proved that the probability for fermions as a function of the number of particles in each macro box is the multiplication over s of the number of states in each macro box factorial then we have g sub s minus n sub s factorial and we have n sub s factorial Okay, what we're going to do now is follow the usual procedure. So we're trying to maximize this function. So before we maximize the function, what we need to do is make this look a bit better. So Stirling's approximation says the natural logarithm of a factorial is equal to a natural logarithm of a minus a. We also know that the logarithm of a b is equal to log a plus log b. And we know that the natural logarithm of a over b is equal to the natural logarithm of a minus the natural logarithm of b. So look very quickly at what we have here. Well, this is a product, so that's a plus b, and this in general here is a quotient, that's a minus b. So we're going to get the log of g sub s factorial. Sorry, we're going to get. Um, sorry, before we do any of that, excuse me. It's difficult to maximize this function. But it's more easy, or easier, excuse me, to maximize the log of it. So I'm going to take the log of this whole thing and then make it look nicer. So when we take the log of it, we're going to have first of all a quotient, so we're going to have a minus b, but the, the denominator is also going to have its own product, a plus b. And then I'm going to apply Stirling's approximation and all the factorials. Alright, so I'm just going to do it reasonably quickly because the algebra is, isn't that difficult, it's just, just a bit of a pain in the face I suppose you could say. Alright, so once you do all those that I, that I said, the natural logarithm of p okay we have g sub s log g sub s minus g sub s so that's the uh, Stirling's approximation here then we have minus g sub s minus n sub s log g sub s minus n sub s that's another um, that's another Stirling's approximation That's a plus here. Okay. And then we have minus n sub s log n sub s plus n sub s. So that's just applying the bits and bobs that I did there. You can do some cancellation with this guy, with this guy, and finally with these two here. And what we find is that the natural logarithm of the probability function for fermions is equal to g sub s log g sub s minus g sub s minus n sub s log g sub s minus n sub s minus n sub s log of n sub s okay it still looks like a bit of a pain in the face but it's definitely uh, it's definitely cleaner than what we had it. So that is the logarithm of the probability function for fermions. Now, what we're trying to do is maximize this subject to constraints. So let's just remind ourselves what the constraints are. The first constraint is that the total number of particles is equal to the sum over s of n sub s. Okay? And that means that the that, that means that when we have the um, 
the change of that is going to be equal to zero. So what we can say is that dn is equal to the sum over s of delta n sub s is equal to zero. That's the first constraint. I'm going to call it constraint one. And then we have a constraint on the energy where that dE is equal to sum over s uh, epsilon delta n sub s is equal to zero. This is constraint number two. Okay, so going back to our method of Lagrange multipliers, we need to have the gradient of our function is equal to alpha times the gradient of constraint one plus beta times the gradient of constraint number two. All right, so alpha and beta are our Lagrange multipliers. And the, the logarithm of the probability function is, is, the, uh, is our function which we're trying to maximize. So what we need to do then is get, well, what is the gradient of the log of p? Uh, the gradient of the log of p is going to be equal to the following. You're going to have plus 1 plus log g sub s minus n sub s. You're going to have minus 1 minus log of n sub s. Okay? So it just, the, I'll just do the differentiation or write the, the, the differentials here just for, for clarity, even though I've already written down the answer. Del del n sub s of the log of g sub s minus n sub s is equal to 1 over g sub s minus n sub s times minus 1. Okay, and we have, bear with me now, so del del n sub s of the log of g sub s minus n sub s minus we have g sub s minus n sub s is equal to plus one. All right, and that's the plus one up here. All right, so that's just the more difficult term. Now we need to get the derivatives of our constraint functions. So putting them all together, we're going to get the following. We're going to get del del n sub s of the log of p is equal to alpha del del n sub s times n plus beta del del n sub s operating on e. Okay, so we're going to get the sum over s, the natural logarithm, g sub s minus n sub s minus the logarithm of n sub s. The reason we can do that is because the minus and the plus here cancel. All right, now well, that's going to be equal to our constraint functions, which is the sum over s, and write it this way because it's just easier, alpha plus beta epsilon. Or we'll say instead of e, you're going to call it epsilon. All right. Now, so if I bring this over, it becomes zero. And the only way this, this equation will be satisfied, the only way this equation will be satisfied is if the logarithm of g sub s minus n sub s minus the logarithm of n sub s is equal to alpha plus beta epsilon. Okay. Rearrange that. Okay, so okay, if we exponentiate both sides, then we're going to get this like that. And finally, if we rearrange it, rearrange it and divide across by n sub s, you're going to get that n sub s is equal to g sub s divided by e to the alpha plus beta epsilon plus 1. Okay, and that is the Fermi-Dirac occupancy function. So we know, at this stage, we know what um, we know what all the components are, so let's r remind us of those. We know that this is the density of states. This here, that's the Fermi, that's the occupancy function, f of e. 
and this is n of e if I suppose we're talking about a continuum of energy states. So the way we could write this is that n of e is equal to g of e times f of e, like that. All right. So we know that alpha for fermions is there a yes for fermions um, we have a chemical potential for fermions. I, I, um, actually, I'll have to think about that. But anyway, beta is one over kT as I've done in a previous video. Okay, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also have a look at universityphysicstutorials.com. Thank you.